a this is a recording of Joseph Dover, son of John Dover, early settler to Ottawa. Yes. Uh, Mr. Dover, do you agree that any information on the tape will be the property of the Ottawa Jewish Historical Society? With the Ottawa, um, with any deletions you'd like to make of the Ottawa Jewish Historical Society. Historical Society. Well, the uh, the Ottawa Jewish Historical Society was just formed recently. There was no historical society in Ottawa before. I believe you you are, you are the one, Mrs. Berman, who who originated the idea of uh, of. Uh, uh, historical, a Jewish historical society. Actually, it was Max Bookman. Which? It was Max Bookman. Well, Max Bookman had some information before. That's right, which you, which you got. But uh, it, it wasn't done as it's being done now. Uh, and uh, uh, you're, you're getting all the information from a lot of the uh, elderly people who came to Ottawa years and years ago. I was born here in Ottawa on Church Street. They changed the name of it to Giggs Avenue since. And I was born on January the 13th, 1894. And, and I remember a lot of things that took place uh, in my uh, father's home since I was a child of about five or six years of age. I remember some of it, it came to me very clearly because at that time my grandfather, my grandfather uh, was brought over by my dad. What was his name? William Dover. Now he is the man who was, who wrote up the minutes who wrote up the minutes of the first meeting of the Adas Gesture and Congregation that took place in 1892. Previous to that, uh, I was told by my what father... What did you call him? What's that? Did you call him Belleville or... No, how did, how my grandfather? Grand, the governor said that. We called him Zayde. We called him Zayde. He was my Zayde. He was my father's father. Was he known as William? Which? Was he known as William? Oh, he was known as William Dover. William Dover. William Dover. Oh, yes. You see, their name in Jewish, that was never changed. Their name in, in, in Yiddish, in, in fact, in Hebrew, was Dovel. Dovel. In fact, my mother used to call my dad occasionally. <laughs> when they weren't on good terms, she used to call him Dovel. You see? So they, when, he, when, they, when he came to Canada, or when he came to the United States, the immigration officials, when, they, when he says his name was Dovel, they said Dover, D-O-V-E-R. Same thing. So they gave him the name, the name of Dover. Of Dover. <laughs> That's how we came, came to the name of Dover. When the, when the customs officials asked his name, he said his name in Jewish was Dover. So they called him Dover. So they gave him the name Dover. And his Jewish name was Kusil. So they gave him the they gave him, they gave him the name of John. They gave him the name of John Dover. That was and your dad. That was his name after he came to the United States. After he came to Canada in eighteen, I'd say in eighteen eighty-five. He was only a youngster at that time. But all these people, uh, I must say that like a lot of others when they got to be 16 and 17 years of age and had to serve the czar they left and because of the pogroms and the persecutions there he left alone was he, the first one of uh, he the was family? the first one of the family he left alone at about 16 or 17 years of age 
and came to New York City. In New York City, when he was there, uh, 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 he sent for my mother, uh, a boyhood, uh, uh, girlhood sweetheart, and she was only about 16 or 17 years of age, so her people sent her eldest brother, Aaron Cohn, her eldest brother with her to New York City. And, and, they, and they married, and they married there. My dad was in, got into the, got into the saloon business. Why didn't they stay uh, in the saloon business? That must have been a we have, business. we have a picture, a large picture. I don't know whether you've seen it or not. Uh-huh. We have a large picture. Joy, Joe, uh, Joy, uh, Fireman. Uh, yeah, Joy Fireman has it enlarged. With the name John Dover right on the why didn't on they the stay, saloon. Why didn't they stay in, in the in the business in the saloon business? Well, the reason he my dad says he he didn't like the he didn't like the saloon business. He he, he didn't he didn't like it. He couldn't he couldn't take it. And at that time, the Waltham Watch Company started in Massachusetts manufacturing watches, and he got the. He went to Waltham and got the agency for the Waltham watches as a young man. And at that time, they were building the Canada Atlantic Railroad to Montreal. The Canada Atlantic Railroad. So, they made a special belt for him to contain the knot watches that he wore on his, on his body, on his bare body. They made, they made a special belt for him that would contain, hold, about about 12 or 15 watches. It was and a, a belt as a, a, to carry with him because he was peddling, he started to sell watches to the employees, to the workers on the railroad, to the railroaders. And that's how he came to, to Ottawa, is because he followed... He followed, he sold these watches to these uh, employees, to these railroaders, until he reached Ottawa. And when he reached Ottawa, there were no Jews there at that time. He had heard from somebody that there was a a man by the name of Bilski, a a Jew, who came to Ottawa years before that, but never settled. The only Jew that was in Ottawa at that time, were the Rosenthal's, but they were German. They were German Jews, Reformed Jews. They were not Orthodox Jews, and that's the reason they would have nothing to do with any of the Jews that came to Ottawa afterwards. These the Rosenthal's were Reformed. The Rosenthal's, yes, but they were they were Reformed Jews. They, they, they lived in Ottawa for a number of years before my dad got here. But he, he knew them. He, he, he knew uh, the Rosenthal's because when they were building the King Edward Avenue Shul in, 18, in 1892, they went to him for some of the money. And my dad, I think you'll read in one of these articles where my dad who became president of the shul, went to some of the most influential men here in Ottawa, going, men like J.R. Booth, W.C. Edwards. It's in one of these articles here that he went went to these men. I remember reading that. Yes, he went to these men and told them that he was, that he got a charter to build a, uh, a shul and form uh, an, uh, an orthodox congregation and every every one of those wealthy men received them royally and gave them good substantial sums with which to build this shul on Murray Street your dad was well liked oh yes very much so he is a very very likable man 
and he became the first president of the Adath Jeshurun congregation in 1892 when, when the new synagogue was built. But for three years previous to that, the few Jews that were here, uh, 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 that is, had their services in our home. Oh, yes. Three years before the shul was built, in about, 18, in about 1887, they met and they had services in our, in our uh, home. What street was that on? Was that on Church Street? No, 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 Church Street we lived on later. This was on Murray Street also. It appears that most of the Jews settled on that street, on Murray Street, and in that vicinity at that time. Of course, you now, the men, the name of the men, the well, name thought, of the I men, the right there at that time to form the to form the congregation, the Dachshund congregation. Were Adler, what was this in Smith, Sugarman, Adler, Smith, Sugarman, Bullock, Bullockin, B O L O K I N, Richter, R I C H T E R, Harris, Kramer. Fine, F-I-N-E. Ash, A-S-H. And Kranf, K-R-A-N-F. So Mr. Bilski wasn't... And there was Spectre. Mr. Bilski wasn't in the bank. Mr. who? Mr. Bilski was not with Well, Bilski, Bilski, uh, yes... He came back, I think, from Mattawa. He came back from Mattawa, but I don't think his name his name was on the original on the original at the time they formed the congregation. What about A. J. Freeman's father? Were they here then? A. J. Freeman's father came came he, well he never lived in Ottawa. They they uh, went to Hamilton. They all went to Hamilton. He started in business in Hamilton. But the Freeman business was run originally by this man Kramer, K-R-A-M-E-R. It was A.J. in 1902, I think it was, who bought, who bought the business from Kramer. Now that story was told to me many times by my dad and my grandfather. Now my, my 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 grandfather William Dover came to uh, came to Ottawa uh, uh, because he, uh, they were brought over just at the time that my dad came here, which was about 1885 or 1887 or something like that. He sent for his father and his stepmother. And also uh, a brother of uh, of my dad's, of, of my mother's. When my mother came over, the a brother, an older brother, Aaron Cohn, came with her. The, but he didn't settle in Ottawa. He settled. He, they went to Indianapolis, Indiana, and they, they started a department store there in Brightwood, Indiana, which is a suburb of, of Indianapolis, and they remained there all their lives. Well, her maiden name I, I didn't know, but I didn't know. But her first name was Gittle because I remember as a as a youngster, as a kid, five or six years of age, my my grandfather, when I was five or six years of age, uh, uh, used to carry me to shul every Friday night and every Saturday, because he sort of took a liking to me, 
and he taught me all about uh, you know Hebrew Hebrew and and Yiddish I don't know whether you talk Yiddish you do at that time Yiddish was the the main language and her name her name was Gittel because I remember my dad every now and again yelling Gittel Gittel that was that was her name and they lived on Murray Street too you lived in separate houses. Oh yes, in separate houses. Were but there, on Murray Street. Were all there any other Jewish families on Murray Street? At that did time, most of these people lived in Murray Street. Around yes, in the lower town. Most of them lived around Murray, St. Patrick, uh, Church, uh, uh, Water Street that uh, my sister Hattie mentioned, uh, St. Joseph Street where my youngest sister, younger sister, was born on St. Joseph Street, you see. But when I was, uh, uh, as I say, when I was five, six years of age, my dad, my, my grandfather, always carried me to shul. Always Friday night, Saturday, mornings when he went, after I was bar mitzvah, I was bar mitzvah in the King Edward Avenue shul. My brother Harry was bar mitzvah in the, in the uh, Murray Street shul. Can you describe that first shul to me? Do you know Which what it shul? Like at all, the very first shul on Murray Street. On Murray Street? Well, I remember it as a... Uh, it, was, uh, just, it was just four walls and a roof. And uh, my dad went to Montreal to buy uh, the first Orin Kadish. Uh, of course, the, the first uh, the Torah that was brought that is, that they used in our home was brought from Montreal by my dad. Because my dad, when Harry was born in 1890, in April, on April the 9th, 1890, that's before the congregation was formed. My brother was born on April the 9th, 1890. And there was no, uh, uh, there was no uh, sheikhed or rabbi here at that time no more. to perform the circumcision so he sent he sent to Montreal and at that time there was no railroad in 1890 so they went by horse and buggy it took them three days to go to the to Montreal and bring uh, a male you know a male down to circumcise my brother Harry because he was the first Orthodox Jewish boy born in the city of Ottawa. And they brought them along. And brought the mail and then to took him back again. That's where Mursky comes in. Mursky later, it was a few years later that Mursky came. Mursky was a Shechem. He was a Chazim. He was everything for the shul. You see? They had, uh, you must have a lot of information on, on Reverend Mursky. Uh, perhaps you'll give me some more. Jacob Mursky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is he. But I'm going yeah. to ask you about him later on. Yes, now, yes. Now, you remember, he was would. the synagogue already built, the first synagogue? No, was, no. There was they nothing. built, no, there was nothing. They, from the ground up, they bought the lot and built the synagogue. To me, as a child, I remember there's four walls with a roof, uh, a fairly tall place because... Uh, it was a strictly orthodox shul, and they also had a balcony for women. So there were two, two oh, stories. Oh, yes, it was two stories. But in, when you were inside, like, like a lot of these shuls now, like a, a lot of these shuls that had uh, a second floor for women, it was actually one story. You get the idea? High story. With a, with, a, with a sort of a balcony for the women. See, with a balcony for the women. And that's what Murray Street Shul had. I, I, I remember that, I remember that uh, uh, hazily, uh, that is when I was only, you see in 18, uh, uh, it was built in 1892, when I was five years of age, that would be uh, about 18, uh, I was born in 94, that would be 1899, before the King Street Shul was built, you see, I was I was up to about eight or nine years of age, so I remember that. I remember it, that very well. Was it a brick building? No, it was a, a wooden construction. Mm -hmm. At that time, that time, there were very, very few brick buildings. Of wooden construction, it was. 
And I guess it was painted. Yes. Okay. But my dad and my grandfather's idea was because coming from Kovne, Kovne Gubelne, you know, near near uh, the, the city of Kovne at that time, they were all well educated in Orthodox Judaism. My mother was very well. She was almost she was a teacher actually of 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 Orthodox Judaism here in the city of Ottawa. Anybody that came went to my mother, and my mother used to translate. I remember the. Uh, uh, the taichum she had, and the oh, all those things, and they used to come to her because they were all well educated in in uh, in Hebrew, in Elish and Kadesh. Well could all, educated. They could all write you see, Hebrew. well educated in the Hebrew. My dad and and his family all, and my grandfather was a strictly Orthodox uh, Orthodox Jew. Were there any Hebrew books in the house? Any Hebrew books other than religious books? You know, other than Sforim and Sidorim? Oh, yes. Hebrew they was, literature. yes. They all went down. Dad went down to Montreal to buy Sidorim and Chaboshim on, and, and uh, uh, Tfilim on Sitzes, on Talesim. For the whole congregation? Yes. Were there yeah. any other kind of books like Hebrew literature? Would they read anything? Well, the only one I knew that my mother used to read an awful lot was this Teichwimish. She had everything in it. It was a big Teichwimish, and she used to read it and interpret it, interpret it, you know, in, in Yiddish for most of them at that time. And uh, it was all, you see, they were so imbued, coming from a strictly orthodox uh, a place like Lithuania at that time, Kovne. And, and of course, all the Kovne Jews or the people who lived in, around Kovne, they were all well educated in Hebrew. They, they, they died for their religion. They died for their religion. No question about that at all. That's the kind of people that my grandfather was and the grandmother and my mother and their people. Now, how did they get kosher in how did they what? How did they get kosher meat when your father was first here and your grandfather? Yeah, was then they used to, they when when uh, uh, Mursky got here, he, he was a sheikh. Yes, but before Mursky, I wonder how... Before they that, they got it from Montreal. They imported They got it, they imported, yeah, they brought it in from Montreal. Because but they wouldn't no use, railroad. they wouldn't take the meat, that, that, uh, <laughs> they die for it. But there was no railroad. There, were, which? There, there was no railroad to ship no. it in on. I guess no, there was no railroad. I think a railroad started, the railroad, I think, came to Canada in 18, I think my dad said 1888 or 1889 or something like that. Shortly after they landed, the railroad came through to Ottawa. I guess they ate very little meat. Which? They probably ate very little meat. Yeah, but... Well, that's the reason my dad says that he lived on eggs and cheese and uh, uh, vegetables and fruit. That's all. That's what they. That was their main. Their main. Their main food were were those things. He lived most of his lifetime. He lived. They lived on eggs and of what eggs would make. You get the idea. What they could make out of eggs. All kinds of very different things. They made out of eggs and fish, fish. They used a lot of fish. My dad, my grandfather, I remember fish and eggs. They were two of the most important. They, they did a lot of things with that. See. Did you ever go fishing with your grandfather or your father? Not my grandfather, because I was only, when he passed away, I wasn't very old. I was bar mitzvah because I remember, you know, the Duchenen. You know what Duchenen is? The Kayan, you know what the Kayan Duchenen? The blessing of the Kohanim. My, my people were all Kehani. They were all Kehani. On the mother's Kohanim. side and on the father's side. Oh. All Kehani. Her name, my mother's name was Kohen. I gave you. Right. Kohen. She was from a, 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 a family of, uh, you know, Kehani. And so was my dad. And that's the reason that my dad, I remember, my grandfather, I remember 
the first time he took me to shul to duch. See, that was in King Edward Avenue, shul. This was after you were back Oh yes, then. because I was born in '94. I was 13 when the King Edward Avenue. In fact, I used to. They had a ladder there up to the second floor that I used to. I used to climb up just for fun and dime ag- down again why as a did, kid. As why a kid. Did they have a well, they had a ladder because the steps weren't built at that time when they were built in 1900. That shoe was built in 1904. So the women had to go up the ladder. That's, but they, 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 they built steps afterwards. Oh, wow. They built steps afterwards. But I remember climbing up the ladders, you know, just for fun, up and down. But that's where my dad used to take me to Duch because I was one of the, one of the Kehani, you see. And he taught me all about Duch, you see. And he used to say to me, that I'll never forget. He, after, you know, to go do and then he used to say to me, Yossel, you know, they go, Yossel, my name, see? Yossel, Tosh nish mechalel Shabbosan. Ad geis duchenen. Tosh nish. That means I mustn't take a streetcar, I mustn't go riding, I mustn't be mechalel Shabbos. You know what, you, you know what that is? Yeah. That is doing anything on Saturday. I used to carry a handkerchief in my in my sleeve here because I wasn't allowed to carry anything. You see? You so we used to time and time he used to say to me, Hustle, Gedenk, Tosh nis machalal shabasain, then do then the duchens, because then the duchens duchens twa ala yib. Ala yib. Because they used to say to me after we were through Duchen, and you know, they used to say to me, you know, uh, congratulations in Yiddish, you know, and I used to say, Gamatim, you know, and so on. That was the answer. I was taught all those things by my grandfather. Gamatim, what, what does that mean? Well, Gamatim means thank you. It means actually means in, in, in Hebrew, in Hebrew. In Hebrew it was. Actually, and, and he, he, he taught me all I ever knew. Why do we say now, yes, your co-op? When they, someone, when a, when a man goes up to read at the, um, you know, goes up to the beam. To, uh, to a beam for uh, an for yes. an aliyah. Well, that's an ordinary, yeah, well, they congratulate him, too. And they say, yes, Kamati. you're co-op, right. and that's have speech. Right, right, and that, that, that's it, too. That's like a lot of them say it in English, say congratulations, you know. When, what happened when, they, when you went up to Jochen? Can you describe it to me? Because we well, don't do it Well, a, a, a Kayan used to, used to go up. When he was going to Duchenin, he had the talus on a Saturday, the talus. He had to wear tzitzes, had to wear tzitzes. Had a talus, and he put the, after he made his own personal prayer, you know, he made his own personal prayer facing the Oren Kedish. And that personal prayer, his prayer was like they say on Yom Kippur. I may not be fit to pray you know, for the Jews who are here. But I take it upon myself to pray and ask God, you know, that is, uh, to ask for prayers should be answered if any of the congregation are asking for certain prayers, certain so things. You, you are the intermediary. Yes, and I was the intermediary. The Cain is the intermediary that prays for the congregation, see? And you put the talus over your head. You may have seen it with the, yeah, with the, Only you know, when I was a very small girl in Yeah, you may have been a very small girl at Oya, no doubt, yeah. And they did away with it years later. But, see, I was bar mitzvah when this shoe, when the King Edward Avenue shoe was built. It was built in 1904. I was born, I was born in 1894. I was 10 years of age. So I was I was uh, duchman when I became bar mitzvah about 1907, you see, in uh, King Edward Avenue Shul, see, and that's the way uh, uh, that, that was the that was the early so the early part of uh, of of the uh, of the uh, course when I when they were uh, another thing that I do remember when I was a kid, the meetings of the congregation used to take place in our home. Not in the shul. Where would, is it in the living That was uh, on either Murray, Murray Street, I think it was, or St. Patrick Street, one of those streets. 
And as a kid, I remember the arguments, you know, a lot of arguments used to go on between Harris, uh, this man Harris, and uh, Specter. He was uh, an uncle of mine. He had, because my father had brought over, he was from a small family too. Uh, 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 my father brought over his two brothers, Harry Dover and David Dover, and one sister, Emma. Her name was Emma, Emma, and she married this man Specter, who came to Ottawa from Montreal. And he was a strictly Orthodox Jew, too. And they made the match between, they were young, both youngsters, between Emma and Mr. Specter. She was my aunt, and he was my uncle, you see. And the arguments that used to take place in our about, home. Mr. Harris and Mr. Specter, what would well, they argue about? Which? What would they argue about? About, about the congregation. Everything was in connection with the congregation. <clears throat> the congregation was the headquarters. The headquarters, that's where everything was transacted. Everything was transacted in, the, in, in our home at that time. Business. If they wanted to bring a new Sifratera, if they wanted to, to hire, uh, uh, hire uh, a, a, rov, a rov, a rabbi for the high holidays, it was all done, it was all done in, in, in our home. Didn't in you our find home. That disturbing? Didn't your mother find it disturbing? Did she did. She did. But she listened. Fortunately, that is, <laughs> she was well educated in Hebrew anyway, you see. And at times she entered the argument too gave her opinion on it. Very often, very often, very often. Who was the boss? Was your mother the boss or your dad? No, no, my dad was. My dad was head of the family, no question about that. But she was an independent person. Oh, definitely. She looked after our education, looked after our Hebrew education, looked after our English education, you know, because Dr. Harry Dover, from the time he was a little boy, he wanted to be a doctor. He wanted to be a doctor. He wanted nothing else to do, but he's got to be a doctor. So my mother saw to him that he was sent to Lisker Collegiate, where I went, to Lisker Collegiate, then to McGill University, and became a doctor. And then he went the first to Jewish doctor. first Jewish doctor here in the city of Ottawa. First Jewish doctor here, here in Ottawa. He and the first, the first Jewish, the first coroner. Jewish coroner here in Ottawa. And Nathanson, Nathanson was maybe seven or eight years later, Hattie, Hattie Nathanson, Hattie Dover, see, her husband, Joe Nathanson, he, he, a few years later, you know, he also went through, like Harry did, the Lisker, where I went through, Lisker Collegiate, and, uh, and McGill. I was slated to be the lawyer of the family. You know, at that time, with a Jewish family, they started to have two boys. When they had two boys, one was a doctor, the other was a lawyer. No question about that at all, at that time. Why so, did you have your, why did you abandon the Murray Street Synagogue when the, when the King Edward, the uh, Dr. Sheeran was built on King Edward? As you may know, or may have heard, that in the 1890s, on account of the pogroms in Europe, particularly in Russia, and having to serve the Tsar when you became 16, 17 years of age, most of the Jews wanted to leave. That's the reason that in 1890, from 1890 to 1905, an awful lot of Jews, Orthodox Jews, religious Orthodox, came to Ottawa. At that time, my yeah, Jew. Were they like adopt enough to wear their kapotas? Did they wear their ordinary clothes like everybody else? Or they did? wore that. That I can tell you, they wore ordinary clothes, because my dad, as long as I can remember, wore Canadian or ordinary clothes. My grandfather, when he first came over, wore the the long kapote with the with the big black Strano. hat. But the, oh, yarmulke, oh, he had a yarmulke. I guess he wore he had a all the time. Oh, tzitzas all the time. We did too. My mother saw to it. Wore tzitzas all the time. And uh, taught us the first prayers, uh, you know, 
and Shayo Yadechem, and, and Benchen, Shayo you know, Benchen. Yeah, we knew all that off by heart. We know all washing, your, washing your hands before. Oh, yes, Shayo there, wash your hands, I should say so. How did you, was there, was there water in the shul there on Murray Street? Yes, yes. The, the water, there was no the water. Was there running water? Yeah, there was running water in the in, in the Mercy Jewel. It may have come maybe a few years. No, it was there when I remember, uh, when I was five, six, seven years of age. I remember there was there was water there, because there was water there was water there was water in my grandfather's home, and and in some of the in some of the other homes then at that time. I think they had just just put in, I don't remember whether it was a pump and a well or whether it was the, you know, it may have been, it may have been a pump, a well and a, and a pump, you know, uh, I remember that too. Would you have had to pump the water? Uh, pump the water. The pump the that is, the, the big pipe was down in the well. And then there was a pump, you know, an ordinary, an ordinary pump, you know, and then it took maybe a half a minute for the water to come up, you see, right. and, and no. in the pump. Oh, was it all right on Saturday to pump water up to wash your hands? Oh, yes. Oh, shut oh to, to work the pump. Oh, yeah, they, they had to work the pump. That oh, was, yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that was yes. But some of them, some of them didn't even want to work the pump. So we used to get the goyim from next door, or some of the other goyim, some of the boys, you know, some of the boys and the girls, to come and start the fire in the stove. It was all a stove, a wood stove. It was all where, a wood where stove. Where was the wood stove? In, in the mm -hmm. kitchen, in the kitchen. There was usually. a kitchen at the back. There was a kitchen at the back. Was it a big kitchen? No, it was a small kitchen. And the pump was there. The pump sometimes was outside. No, most of what I remember it was inside because in the winter time, in the winter time, you know, it, it, it would freeze. They used to have a lot of trouble with it too. You know, during the cold weather in January and February and so on, it, it, used, to, it used to freeze. But uh, that's the reason they take objection, you see, because my, my father was the first, he formed the congregation, and three years before that, it took place in his home, and they had the Sifriteras and the Chamboshim and, and everything else, and, and Sedulim. And they probably And then, uh, then, uh, uh, then he, he became the first, uh, uh, president and my grandfather William Dover that he brought over shortly after he came to Ottawa here he brought over uh, his grandfather and that grandfather wrote those minutes that you have in Hebrew and Yiddish he was, could we look at these minutes yes? could we look at these minutes after this so, so many years since I, you know, my mother, my mother, used to, she used to write in, uh, in Yiddish all the time, all the time, all the time. And that's the way we learned it too. But since then I've used it so little, you know. Are the names of some of them in there? Yes, they are, but they're very difficult to read. Very difficult to read or to make out. Well, I tell you, some of them, some of them who read, who read Hebrew well or in Yiddish, some of them, some and of I them. tell you, you should. Uh... So according to our minutes, there were four Dovers here right. in 1992. There was, there was. Harry Dover moved to Eganville, Ontario. Moved to Eganville, Ontario. He started in the general store business and stayed there for about 40 years. Now, his brother David Dover mm -hmm. was brought over at the same time, and he, he moved to Ch to Chalk River, Ontario, and started a general store there. And that business, the estate of David Dover, is still in existence. He, they own the whole town. They own the hotel and the general store and everything. The, the Dovers are still there then in Chalk River? That, well, some of the Dovers, no, they moved away from there. Uh, he was Reeve, uh, uh, one of the boys... Uh, I should have brought that book too where he was, he passed away here about uh, five or six years ago. Connie Cornelius Dover. Cornelius Dover. They called him Connie Dover. He was David Dover's son. He became Reeve, like mayor of Chalk River. David Dover. David Dover. Uh, 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 
the Cornelia Stover. Cornelia Stover. The, the son later, later became Reeve, Reeve of Chop River, Ontario. And the business is still in existence and they, they sold the hotel and other things. But Harry Dover, that is Dover's menswear here in Ottawa, that is not ours. That belongs to Harry Dover's sons. So Harry Dover's sons Dover's came back menswear. to Ottawa. They came back to Ottawa. In fact, one of them went to Cornwall, Ontario. He became, he became very uh, uh, popular in Archie Dover was his son. And he became very popular in, uh, in Cornwall, Ontario. So yeah. your living room was really wasn't your living room. It was actually the synagogue. Too. It was a meeting place for everything. And Anything that ever took place among the Jews was always talked about and trashed out in our home. You know, at the time, even even at the time of the that the Murski Chua was up, you know, they wanted to discuss something privately and you know, something important to the congregation about the congregation. It was done. It was done in our. It was done in our home. You were telling me why? Why did you move to the King Edward Street synagogue? Why did you not stay with the old Murray Street, with the original synagogue? Well, it it got too it got too small. It could only accommodate the Murray Street Shul. Could only accommodate uh, maybe a, a, a minion or two. That's all. It was a very small. It was a it was a very one room and a very small building. Did you very become? Did you? And you another feature. Affluent? Another feature. They didn't like the the location. They got to the point of where they felt that Murray Street wasn't good enough for the congregation. So actually, people became more affluent and they could afford right. something better. But we, the location was all right where all the Jews started to live was Lower Town in Ottawa. Lower Town and uh, like Sandy Hill, you know. Like uh, Besser Street, Daly Avenue, Bilsky's lived on Daly Avenue later so on in years. Did and the so on. Jews uh, And we to did too, we moved away from there, but close enough to the shul to be able to walk on Saturdays and during the high holiday. Because nobody was allowed to have that sacrilegious, that, that uh, terrible. See, it was strictly orthodox. That's one of the reasons, Mrs. Berman, why. There hasn't been a reform shul in Ottawa until here three or four years ago. They tried to form a reform shul, even when my dad was president of the shul, by, by Rosenthal. But dad wouldn't, dad said he wouldn't. And then another feature, they couldn't get any members. They couldn't get any members. Even the children of those who came from there were educated in Hebrew and, and like I was, in Yiddish and Hebrew. I, I could address an audience in Yiddish easily. I, I was president of the literary society. But even yes. if you spoke Yiddish and Hebrew, still their ideas might have been more modern because the reform movement was flourishing in the States at that time. You know, there were a lot of reform congregations already well established in the United States and New York. Yeah, yes, there were, but... The United States congregation of Mrs. Berman in the early years were such a tremendous distance. It's not like New York now or Florida, or, you know, it's so close. But at that time, to New York City, I think it took my dad later on when he wanted to go down to the city of New York, it took him something like a week or ten days to, to get down there and back again. But the distances were so vast and so far away, you see, but particularly from, and at that time, when you were in New York City, like my dad used to say in New York City, they'd say, uh, uh, they used to say to him when he ran the saloon, because he had an idea of coming, you know, when he was peddling those watches, selling those watches, they used to say to him, you'll never be able to live there, you'll freeze to death in Ottawa, you'll never be able to live there. 
and on in the papers too. There were snowstorms there that used to cover cover over cover ten feet high. And even even when I was a kid, I couldn't cross in the wintertime. I couldn't cross Murray Street or St. Patrick Street or King Edward Avenue. Only at the intersections where a plow used to come by horse to clean it. I couldn't even look across the street. I couldn't even see across the street because when I was a kid, I could only see across the street when I, when I stood at the corner where it was where the crossing was plowed. That was, in, that was in my day when I was a kid, five, six, seven years of age. Not that there, there was any more snow then. No, just no. Just it wasn't clean. It wasn't cleaned away. And it piled on and piled on and piled on. They had a horse, pl- horse they had a plow that was pulled by a horse and it used to push all the, all the, at that time they had, uh, they had no automobiles, of course. It was horses and sleighs and they pushed the, all the snow all winter over to the side. So every time they pushed it over, <laughs> it came 10 feet high on the side, of, between the sidewalk and the, and, and the road. They have to do it with teams of horses. Oh, yes. That reminds me. When my dad got here the first time, he got on a horse car on Spark Street. You know where I am, where the mall is, where my store is, the, the uh, mall? Spark mall? He got on a, a car on, on, on the steel tracks, on regular steel tracks, but the streetcar was pulled by a horse. All it had was a uh, uh, a brake, a brake to stop it. It shouldn't run into the horse. There was a, a man there, a conductor that used to stop it at every corner. Every and the brake was a big iron dad, wheel. In 1890 or 1888 or 87, 85, he got on that streetcar, and they had they had a picture of that streetcar and my dad and my grandfather, but we could never find it. Mind you, the, 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 one, of the, one of the papers had it, was given that picture years ago, years ago, but we could never, we could never find out what year it was in or, what, or, or when it was. What paper did you always, did you always, did you always take the journal? Did which? Did you always take the journal rather than the Citizen? Well, no, the Citizen was, the Citizen is the older paper here in Ottawa. Okay. The younger paper is the journal. And another feature, the Citizen uh, gets more advertising because it's an older paper and its circulation, 90% of its circulation is in Ottawa. Only 65% of the circulation of the journal is in Ottawa. The other 35% is out in the country. All the little towns around Ottawa, all the little towns subscribe to the, some of them subscribe to the Citizen too now, of course. But years ago, it was 65% for the Journal and 90% for, for Ottawa proper. See? Mr. Dover, would you know, were there ever very many German immigrants who came here? In the early years? No. Very, very few. That's that, one of the reasons. I'm glad you asked that, Ms. Berman, because that's one of the reasons why in the American cities, within a few years after the Orthodox Jews got there, German Jews were known to be Reformed Jews. Rosenthal tried the old man a number of times. Could get nobody. Couldn't get anybody. Couldn't get anybody until you prove it shows you that they couldn't get anybody until until 1972, 1973. For a period of 85, 90 years, they couldn't get anybody. But in the United States, there's the point. Every city in the United States had reform, even when, even when I was a boy. Reform Jews in the United States. Because when Harry went to McGill, and I, I was there, I was there myself, a number of times, and they had started to reform Jews in the city of Montreal. And in, and in New York, they had a lot of reform Jews in New York, but not where the Orthodox Jews were. The east side, if you know New York, the east side of New York, Delancey Street, Esther Street, all those streets, that was all Jews. 99% Jews around the early part of the 
the early part of the 20th century and, and the latter part of the 19th century. All Tell me Jews. another thing, Mr. Dover. Which? Usually, Jews were, when they came here by profession, they were tailors, or, you know, they were in the needle trades. They went into the needle trades, but they never did in Ottawa. There were no, you know, very few tailors ever sent up any manufacturing. There was no clothing manufacturing ever set up here. Just like now in the city of Ottawa. There are very, very few manufacturers here in the city of Ottawa. In the city of Montreal, it was different. The city of Montreal, as soon as the Jews got there, they start the shirt manufacturing business and the tie manufacturing and the ladies ladies wear manufacturing business and all every everything was in Jewish hands, particularly soft goods. Soft goods was all in Jewish hands. Soft goods would be clothing. What would be clothing? All kinds of clothing, ladies and men's and children's always over the years. Why did? But it never it never. My dad had an idea at one time. I remember when I was a youngster may have been bar mitzvah at that time, of moving to the city of Montreal, but he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't go. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, my mother wouldn't, uh, wouldn't think of it. You see, unfortunately, my father and mother, uh, as I, I told you, childhood sweethearts, brought over to New York, married, moved to the, moved to the city of Ottawa, came to the city of Ottawa, she gave birth to five boys and two girls. Harry Dover was the eldest. My sister Hattie was next. I was the third. My brother M. H. Dover. Mike Dover was fourth. David, David Dover, and Jack Dover, uh, the youngest boy, and then my sister Sylvia, who was the youngest. And she gave birth to seven children and passed away. And she was only 41 years of age. She had worked very hard. Worked very hard. She developed, she developed a heart condition from working. Developed a heart condition. And passed away. She's buried. And another feature I want to tell you about while I think of it. My dad, in 1890, in 1880, 88 or 89, bought the cemetery on the Metcalf Highway, which is still the Jewish cemetery, and it was registered in my dad's name. It still is registered in the name of John Dover. Because he had to have, he had to have a Basalem. He had to have a Basalem. So he was the man who bought the, the Jewish cemetery. And it's still in the name of John Dover. Of course, they added to it a good deal later. You know that my dad is buried right on the right in the front row as you enter the cemetery, as you enter the cemetery, away on the left, a special, a special right in front. If you go there, you you someday you'll see it. Right on the extreme front left, the name of John Dover, where a year he was born. And the year he passed away. Now I'm just giving you the very, very early things that I remember, Mrs. Berman. That is very early, very early. I'd say between the between the time I was born in 1894 up to about 19. I was bar mitzvah in 19. 1907. I was by Mitch. Uh, Solomsky was my teacher. Solomsky was my teacher. Is that Mr. Solomsky? Yes. Solomsky was my teacher when I was by Mitzvah. He stood alongside of me when I said my master in 1907. Was he Abraham? He was, he was a fabulous the teacher. Of the Sloan <coughs> yes, he was a father of, he was a father of a, Dr. Abe Sloan and uh, Cousins to the other Solonemsky, the Israel Solonemsky. That is a cousin of his. That's how he came. Dada was a young man. He was a very, very young man. About, uh, and, and did he come he Must have come here maybe in 1904, 1903, 1904. Because he, he was my rabbi. He, he was my rabbi when I went to Cheder. He taught you everything? Yes. He. he, he he, he, he took a sort of a fancy to me too because I was, I was excellent in Hebrew and in 
That's the reason when my mother died, I was him years ago, I davened, I davened, uh, davened for a moment. I can daven, I can daven even uh, a I can daven like a chazan, like a chazan. Well, most of the people will tell you that I'm well educated in Hebrew, no question about that at all. Sure, and then when my dad passed away, uh, sometimes when I come uh, uh, for a yard site, uh, cement asked me whether I want a daven. All the time. All the time. Because I was... And this is the man who taught me. This is the man who taught me. He stood alongside of me when I said my mafter, my mafter in, in, uh, when I was bar mitzvah in the king. I was one of the early ones bar mitzvah in the King Edward II because I was... I was uh, by Mitzvah 1907. And yeah. the congregation was, was affluent enough to hire teachers. Kaplans, Kaplans were here at the, oh yes, later Kaplans came. Later Kaplans came. And uh, Smiths were here a long time. Fine. They moved to Montreal. The sons moved to Montreal, the Fines. But his name was Michael Fine. Michael. Michael Fine. He was one of the early ones here too. I think his name should be his name should be on the uh, on the on that list too. Michael Fine and a man by the name of Bullockin, as I told you, he was here at that time. And you haven't got you Richter. You have all those names I gave you. Though. And Cranf. Well, you have Cranf. And Kramer's Bullockin. You Sugarman. You have that Adler when, and so on. When you when you know when you move from Murray Street to King Edward Avenue in 1902 when the new shoe was built. Uh, did you change anything in how you dovened? Did you change the dovening at all? Was the dovening the same in the boat? The, 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 the which? The government? The de how you uh, prayed. Oh, the oh, oh, you mean... Uh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. We, we always, we went right on with the same routine as, as the people did in, in Cork. What was Same routine. The, what was the routine? Could you run well, down the routine, the, 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 uh, as I told you, the, the most important thing was no Jew had to work on Saturday or do any, or light a stove or light anything or do anything like that. We always had going to come in and do everything on Saturday, Friday night and Saturday, always. Every one of the other Jews who were here too, they always had going, always had going. They never worked on Saturday. Saturday was a holy day. And none of the Jews at that time, years and years and years, never worked on a Saturday. So what time would you start the services? Would you start them about nine? Sabbath services were pretty much the same as they are now. About nine? Used to daven, we used to daven in the morning around 7 o'clock, 7.30. You start and then, yes, yes, the Sh Sh that's Shachris, you yeah. see, like Shabbos, Shabbos Shachris, used to start at 7 o'clock in the morning. Seven. Hey? You start at seven. Seven, yeah. That is on a Saturday. On a Saturday at 7 o'clock in the morning, Shachris. And, and then, and, uh, then it did, uh, now I think, now they start, at 7.30, don't they? At 7.30. Yeah, around 7.30. Around 7.30. And then you go through the Torah reading through all the... The Torah reading and everything and Mafti. I got Mafti here a number of times. I tell you that I, who I went to. There used to be a Shamas here, not Greenberg. There used to be another Shamas. But what's the name? I'll tell you, uh, uh, Rabbi... Uh, mm -hmm. eh? uh, he became a rabbi here a few years ago. Rabbi Cement. Cement. See, sometimes, because if they want to give me a mafter, I've got to look it over. Definitely. I haven't, you know, so many years. So I go to cement. I went to cement the last week. A few days before, you know, Saturday. I'd say cement. I'd say, it wasn't rabbi then. Cement, hear me say mafter. I said, because what's the name? I'm getting mafter on Saturday. See, so he used to listen to it. He used to listen to it. And he used to say, fine, fine, okay, <laughs> he says, he says <laughs> you'll get, you'll get uh, mafters very often. But of course, now it's different. Now they're paying more attention to youngsters than they are to old men. See, that's one, of, that's one of the things they have against the rabbi. 
Did you ever hear that against this rabbi, Rabbi Exke? No, they he's said, gone now. Hey? He's gone now. He's, he's leaving here in February. But he's not going to be a rabbi anymore. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to teach. He will no longer be a rabbi. That's what he told me the last time I saw him. You know, the last time I saw him, it was at some affair. I said, Rabbi, I heard that you're leaving. I said, I can't understand it. So listen what he says to me. He says, yes, Joe, I'm leaving. I'll be away in February. I says, what happened? He says, it's because of your leaders. I said, what do you mean? He says, I'm telling you, Joe, exactly just what I said. You have a certain few leaders, and those leaders, it's whatever those leaders say. Those leaders say that they don't like Rabbi Eckstein, regardless of what the other the community wants. They were going to circulate a petition or something, you know, but I don't, I think that's all. But that's what he, that's what the rabbi told me the last time I saw him. Yeah? Yeah. Can I get your drink of water? A which? Yeah. Uh, Oui. <laughs> now you see we had to learn there was Yiddish we knew Yiddish you know like the article I read you may have read it too in, uh, in one of the uh, Jewish uh, papers that I got where it says that the only time that Jews use Yiddish is when when they don't want their children or anybody else to hear what they're saying. So they talk in Yiddish. Or if some Jew wants to tell a joke, usually the, the joke that he tells in Yiddish is a fabulous joke. Just like uh, Byron, Byron Cohn, you know, it is Yiddish stories. And that, that's a lot of truth. They claim it's a dying language. It's a dying language. Now you take my son as well as educated as I am, and my wife also in in, in, Yiddish, in Hebrew. He can't speak any Yiddish, and my daughter can't speak any Yiddish. Can you imagine that? Well, I bet your mother spoke French. Oh, <laughs> I should say so. She probably but, learned to speak French and to learn to speak English. Oh yeah, she did. She did. Because and my dad too. My dad too. My dad too. English and French. They would have and Yiddish. Had to and Yiddish. But my dad and my mother knew German, knew Russian, knew Polish. Polish? They were well educated. Oh yes, oh yes. My my mother and my dad because uh Kovne, Kovne was near the Neiman River, which is which the border between Germany and Lithuania. You get the idea? And this little town, this uh, your brick, the little town that they were born in, they lived in, was close to Kovne. At that time, Jews were not allowed to live in, city, in cities. So they lived around the cities. You see? Were they able to go to a gymnasium? Were they able to go to school? Were they able to get, you know, to get a, a, uh, an education? In, in oh, yes. Oh, the yes. Town where oh, they yes. Lived. Yes. They had schools there. In Yorbrick, that little town outside of Kovne, it was a, it was a suburb of Kovne, Yorbrick. Yorbrick, it's called in Yiddish. You could put Y O U R B R I C K. We always we called it we called it Yorbrick. <laughs> That's what we used to call it because I used to go and mail letters occasionally when I was a little boy that my mother used to write to her parents in Yorbrick. You see? Did she write in German? Well, she wrote in German, and she wrote mostly in Yiddish. She wrote them in she wrote them in Yiddish. But they that's how they got to know German too so well. And they never came over. Now, another thing that I must tell you, this is getting away from the Dover family. My wife's people came to Canada, Ottawa, on account of my dad. They also came from a Yorbrick. Who were they originally? Their name was Ross. Their Russian name was Roskus. R O S K U S. But Ross was their name. They changed it when they got to Ottawa. 
They also came here. Uh, Jean was born here in Ottawa. They came about 19, they came about 1904. They came to Ottawa, and they came to Ottawa on account of John Dover. See, they used to correspond, and of course, they didn't want to remain there. They had to serve the czar and everything else. Now, Ross, this man Ross, their father, we have a picture of his father in Jovic, and Jean's, that is, this man's wife, Jean's grandmother, came from a family by the name of Strashun. Strashun. Now, you will find a library in a small town, or I think they, it was in, in Kovne. You will find a library in Kovne called the Strashun Library. They became very wealthy. And the aunt, my uh, Jean's aunt, her people founded and donated this library, this, and it's still called the Strashun Library in Russia. Was near Kov, near, in, in, in Kovne, the Strashun Library in Kovne. And that was, that was endowed, built and endowed by her grandfather and grandmother. Now we have a picture, he was a lawyer, uh, an avocat, you know, he was a lawyer. Oh, very impressive looking man. I should have brought his picture to show everybody who comes to my home because she has it in a large frame. A very impressive looking elderly man. He was Your killed. Wife's grandfather. Uh, uh, wife's grandfather. Wife's was grand killed. grandfather was killed, yes. He was killed by the Bolsheviks. Yeah, in, in, in a pogrom. In a pogrom. But the Strashun Library is still is still in, in Kovne. Anybody who goes to Kovne now, I was never in Russia. There are two countries that I never went to. I was all over the world. Gina and I were in all any any place all over the world. But we never went to Germany because of my feeling. I couldn't you know Yeah. I uh, I just couldn't couldn't go there. So uh, we were in Switzerland and we were in all those other places, you know, right? And a lot of people you've met in, uh, in France and England and uh, Spain and Italy and uh, they're all over in, uh, uh, you name a country, Sweden, Norway, we're all over the world. Gene and I have traveled all over the world, but we two countries we never went to. I couldn't go, nor Gene, we couldn't go to Germany. Couldn't go. Just couldn't. Couldn't be there, couldn't get there because of this Holocaust you know, during the last war. So, now, another thing I want to show you. That is my wife's family, also well educated in, they were all the Orthodox Jews. Now, this, I don't think you, you'll return this to me. There's my father's picture. There's my dad. There's, there's Friedman, and there's Kathleen. Now, the, a good deal of the story is in this reference book. Here, mm -hmm. and here, and here, yeah. and here about Dover and Bilski and when, and I think, you, you see, see the Marskis, you say you were going to have the Marskis came here about 1896. See that? Mm -hmm. In 1896. Do you remember where, do you remember where, you know, where the Marskis? Oh, yes. Why, I used to go... Uh, as a boy, as a kid, I went with chickens, uh, you know, to have him slaughter them, uh, you know, a sheikh. For your mother. Oh yeah, for my mother. Yeah, for our family. When I was when I was a youngster. You were never in the food business. Who? You, you, the dogs no, were no, not in the food business. No, 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 never in the food business. Never in the so food. you would go. We were in the wholesale, the wholesale grocery business, wholesale produce. Did my did my sister mention it? Wholesale produce. Didn't go into it too much. Wholesale produce in 1905, 1906, 1907. 
wholesale wholesale produce wholesale produce is, is it something there about wholesale produce 27 that's it produce that's it in commission 27 york street but that was that was 1911 yeah but before 19 it just started well, long before 1911 we were there we were there for many years on on york street my dad owned the building there at and that so point. you lived there and the business. yes First few years, about 19, when I was when I was uh, before bar mitzvah, we lived. There were living quarters, two floors of living quarters above the the store, and that's where we lived in the, in the two floors. That's where my mother died, by the way. Mother died there. Mm -hmm. She was 41 years of age. Yeah. And uh, that's the business that we were in. You so see, you lived most upstairs, the business was downstairs. and the business was downstairs. We lived in the two floors up there, and uh, for a few years, then of course uh, we moved to McLaren Street. Uh, we bought that uh, building, that home of John Garland. You know the wholesale dry goods people, Garlands. They built a magnificent home at the corner of McLaren and Kent. Oh, it was a magnificent home, and my dad had made a lot of money, so he bought that home and Harry graduated. Harry was Harry was in the war, you know. He was he was in the war in the, uh, 1914 in the First World War. My brother Harry. They stationed them. Then later they stationed them in a. They stationed them in a shock shell hospital in Coburg, Ontario when he came back from the war in 1914-1915. He graduated McGill in 1914. Just in time to go on. To Which? Go, just in time to be yes. in the war. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Graduated in 1914 McGill in, yeah, in medicine. Then he, when you lived on Murray Street, what business was your dad in? Uh, they were in the. They were. They were doing. Even my grandfather did peddling. You know, every Jew was a peddler. Every old Jew in New York City. Every one of these old, old. They were all peddlers. That's oh. when my dad started. My grandfather started the same way in the peddling. Did he have a horse? Or? Yes. Yes. In fact, he had two horses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was your granddad. <laughs> That's my grandfather. Yeah, my okay. grandfather, yes. Did you ever go with him on his round? Yes, I did, and on my dad's too. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Then my dad got an idea after after York Street. After York Street, he got an idea of going to, to opening up general stores like the, uh, the other brothers did. So we opened up a general store up the Gatineau. One in Bouchette, Quebec. Bouchette, Quebec. They changed the name to Burbridge since he was there. To Burbridge. B-O-R-B-R-I-D-G-E. Burbridge. And another one, an ale one. A-Y-L-W-I-N. He had an idea of a chain of, of general stores. You know, because of, of his two brothers, he, he figured that he'd, he'd start a, a chain of general stores in the country. So he opened up Bouchette and opened up Aylwin, and of course Harry, Harry, uh, my uncle, he one was in Eganville and one was in Chalk River. So they were going to they were going to amalgamate and start a chain of general stores at that time. Did it work? Well, it didn't pan out too well. I'll tell you the reason why. It's always a reason for it. In this Bouchette, Quebec, that's where we learned our French. We went to French schools there, like so during the summer time. The whole family moved. Well, no, we didn't. We only moved there for a few months. We were only there a few months, but we were there every summer, the two or three summers that it was open. You know, we were there. That's where we, all all my family speak French fluently. You know, did uh, Mrs. Nathanson speak French here while she was here? She didn't, eh? Well, yeah. I asked her though. That's where that's where we learned our French. Now, here's the answer. The reason I tell you where we learned our French was because we started to do a lot of business in Bouchette. We were in between two general stores. Remember, as a kid, Jules Pottery, 
he, he, he's in business here in Ottawa. His children or grandchildren are here. Well, he himself, big, tall Frenchman, and uh, the other one was, was Merleau, M-E-R-L-E-A-U, on the other side. My dad had bought out an old, old-time general store. McCumber was their name that my dad bought out. Between, and this store was between Jules Pottery and Merleau in the middle. M-E-R-L-E-A-U. M-E-R-L-E-A-U. Merleau. M-E-R-L-E-A-U. See? So you know what happened? Because the old story, a Yid in a French, despite the fact that we learned how to talk French, the only thing is we never went to, to, to their churches and never advertised so the priests in their sermon used to say patrone pour les juifs patrone pour les juifs le juif ne peut payer pour l'église he doesn't pay for the church see what happened and of course they were so you know so French and so Catholic there that we lost all our business Within, uh, within, I was going to the collegiate here at that time because I used to go. I used to go there during during the summer months, see? and that's what the. I heard it. I heard it. What the name for the Jew? Must have heard Don't buy from a Jew. He doesn't support our church. And they had a they had a move within 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 a, a little over a year. Here and I had to move out of there in the second year. And in Aylwin, there were a lot of French too in Aylwin. And, uh, and even, even the English. Because we started there, there was another general store. It's near Gracefield. It's near, it's just a short distance from Gracefield up to Gatmill. Kajabajua and Gracefield. And they started to do the same thing. Only, uh, they'd say, you know, don't patronize the Jew. Patronize Marlowe. Uh, patronize Grace. There was Grace. G R A C. Gracefield. Grace. Gracefield is named after that family. They were in business in Aylwood. Grace. G R A C E. And they too used to say, "Why don't you patronize? Why patronize us? What do you want to? Uh, a bit of listen. Wherever the Jew goes in every line of business." And the Semitism springs up right away. Because the Jew, he has the knack. He has the knack of making a success of things. He has that knack. It's natural with him. It's natural with him. And, and everywhere it's anti-Semitism. Even when we were in this business too, too, okay. with Friedman. And they did it. Uh, across the Lee, across the street from us was S. J. Major Limited, York, York Street. S. J. Major Limited, and 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 Joseph Grant was alongside of us at that time. M. A. J. O. R. M. A. J. O. R. And and Joe Joe Grant, Joe Grant, and Pro Provo and Alar. P R O V O S T Provo and Alor, they were around there too. And do you think that Anderson didn't spring up there? Saved. And my dad became, you know, moved away from there, but still in the business and so on. Anderson sprung up. So did you? Did you have to? Did your dad have to depend on Jewish clientele? Well, no, not 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 altogether on Jewish trade. We got a lot of no, no. There weren't very many Jewish people in the retail business at, the, at that time. See, there weren't very many, the very the many Protestant Jews. People, Which the English speaking people, the English speaking people. Yes, there was always, you know, every now and again, of these pogroms and writing, you know, about what's taking place in in Russia at that time. And they even some of the some of the going used to turn around and say. You know who's responsible for all that trouble in Russia? The Jews. 
The Jews will come. The Jews keep to themselves. They have their own religion. They have their own synagogue. They have their own uh, social function. Everything, they support their own. But they do not support the others. That was a, that was a story against the, against the Jews. Even a, year, a number of years ago in Canada, the same thing. Of course, in the United States now it's different. There is a lot of anti-Semitism there too. Now don't misunderstand me. There's a lot of anti-Semitism there too. But the fact that Jews have become so... The, the numbers of them in so many cities are well-educated and occupying uh, important positions judicially in every other way and in business, like Macy's and, and, and uh, uh, what's the name of the other big one, Macy's and Gimbel's. All Jews, all the department stores throughout the United States pick up the New York Times. So how was your father able to manage you know, how I, with the anti-Semitism? How was he able to be so successful? Your dad, did he have special service? And well, did he deliver or... Yes, he, he was. How did he persevere yeah, he was. He was a very. He was a very. Uh, a very likable man. He was very. He had a very. Very nice. Uh, that is, he was strict, but it was strict in a sense of fairness. You get the idea, and that, that's the reason we were all raised that way. See, in, in a sense of fairness, and that's why. Uh, while I'm here, that's why. Uh, when my brothers called me up about the name John Dover and William Dover not being, uh, uh, not being in these, some of these articles, I say that uh, out of a sense of fairness to the memory of these men, like John Dover, William Dover, it's only fairness that they should be mentioned wherever, wherever, this, wherever they, this appears, in fairness to their memory.